Hello, my name is Shiraditya Rakshit. Learning outcomes. To give students an overview of those rights that are non-derogable on account of them being expressly stated as such in the international instruments as well as those rights that are non-derogable on account of being peremptory norms from which no state can derogate from by way of treaty. By the end of the module, students will have an understanding of those civil and political rights that are enshrined in international instruments with respect to non-derogable rights with specific focus on the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. 1966, the ICCPR. Introduction. The concept of non-derogation is related to the idea of core human rights and comprises mostly of first generation rights, while international human rights treaties allow for derogations which may be understood as the act of a state suspending the application and enjoyment of certain human rights upon its declaration of a state of public emergency, affecting the life of a whole nation even in those exceptional situations. Certain core human rights must apply at all times. These rights are understood to be non-derogable. This module familiarizes students with those specific civil and political rights that are understood to be non-derogable with specific focus on the ICCPR provisions and its authoritative interpretation by the Human Rights Committee in the general comments. The module further deals with rights that are non-derogable on account of enjoying status of just cogens. Non-derogable rights in the ICCPR. The ICCPR specifically sets out a list of rights that state parties may never derogate from. The Human Rights Committee, the treaty monitoring body for the ICCPR, HRC, has further expounded this concept in its authoritative interpretations known as General Comments. Article 4 of the ICCPR. Article 4 of the ICCPR is of paramount importance for the system of protection for human rights under the ICCPR. It specifies the circumstances in which derogation from the obligations enshrined in the ICCPR is permitted by state parties and also lists the rights that are non-derogable. According to Article 4, Clause 1, in time of public emergency, which threatens the life of the nation and the existence of which is officially proclaimed, the state parties with ICCPR may take measures derogating from their obligations under the ICCPR to the extent strictly required by the exigencies of the situation provided that such measures are not inconsistent with their other obligations under international law and do not involve discrimination solely on the ground of race, colour, sex, language, religion or social origin. The HRC in General Comment 29, State of Emergency Article 4, General Comment 29, has clarified that measures derogating from the provisions of the ICCPR must be of an exceptional and temporary nature. Before a state moves to invoke Article 4, Clause 1, two fundamental conditions must be met. The situation must amount to a public emergency which threatens the life of the nation and the state must have officially proclaimed a state of emergency. Further, the phrase to the extent strictly required by the exigencies of the situation implies that state justify measures on the basis of the principles of proportionality. No measure derogating from the provisions of the ICCPR may be inconsistent 
with the state party. Other obligations are international law, particularly the rules of international humanitarian law. This is reflected in Article 5 Clause 2 of the ICCPR. For example, if action conducted under the authority of a state constitutes a basis for individual criminal responsibility for a crime against humanity under the Rome Statute. Article 4 cannot be used as jurisdiction justification that a state of emergency exempted the state in question from its responsibility. Article 4 Clause 2 lists out rights from which no derogation is possible. As the rights are reflective either of peremptory norms or because these rights are such that derogation from them can never be justified in an emergency. Article 6. Article 6 states that every human being has the inherent right to life. This right shall be protected by law and no one shall be arbitrarily deprived of his life. It further states that when deprivation of life constitutes the crime of genocide, it is understood that nothing in this article shall authorize any state party to the ICCPR to derogate in any way from any obligation assumed under the provision of the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. At the time of drafting of the ICCPR, there was a general agreement among state parties on the need to safeguard this right. However, the scope and delineation of this right has been the subject of much discussion. For instance, a heavily debated question is whether abortion or contraception is limiting the inherent right to life under Article 7 and should therefore be prohibited under domestic law. Another issue is with respect to dilution of right to life so as to permit death penalty. Article 7, prohibition of torture, cruel, inhuman and degrading treatment. The Human Rights Committee in General Comment 20 has held that the scope of the protection required goes beyond torture as normally understood. It may, it may not be necessary to draw sharp distinctions between the various prohibited forms of treatment or punishment. These definitions depend on the kind purpose and severity of the particular treatment. Article 7 Prohibition of medical or scientific experimentation without consent. The HRC in its Universal Periodic Review exercise of time opined that more attention needs to be given in securing observance of this right specifically by countries whose scientific and medical capabilities are highly developed. Special protection in regard to such experiments is necessary in the case of persons not capable of giving their consent. Article 8 Prohibition of Slavery Slave trade and servitude Slavery and servitude are terms with separate connotations, while slavery implies destruction of juridical personality and is considered the worst form of bondage intended to destroy the dignity of an individual, servitude was a more generic idea covering all possible forms of domination of an individual. Article 11. Prohibition of imprisonment because of inability to fulfill contractual obligations. It is understood that this prohibition does not apply to crimes committed through the non-fulfillment of obligation of public interest imposed by statute or court order, such as the payment of maintenance allowance. It also does not apply if the debtor acts with malicious intent and deliberately refuses to fulfill contractual obligations or neglects to do so. Article 15. Principle of legality and non-retroactivity in criminal law. That is a requirement that criminal liability and punishment is limited to clear and precise provision in the law that was forced at the time the act of omission takes place, except in cases where a 
latter law imposes a lighter penalty. Article 15 incorporates the principle of nullum crimen sine lege and nulla poena sine lege. That is, there can be neither crime nor punishment unless there is a law that so declares. Article 16 Recognition Everywhere as a person before the law, Article 16 is inspired by Article 6 of the Universal Declaration on Human Rights. The expression as a person before the law recognizes the legal status of every natural person and his capacity to exercise rights and enter into contractual relations. Article 18 Freedom of Thought, Conscience and Religion This freedom encompasses freedom of thought on all matters, personal conviction and the commitment to religion or belief whether manifested individually or in common with others. The ICCPR uses belief and religion broadly and seeks to promote a wide range of thoughts. Article 18 distinguishes between the freedom of thought, conscience, religion or belief from the freedom to manifest religion or belief. The former is protected absolutely, however the latter is subject to restrictions set out in Article 18, Clause 3. Therefore, for example, a right of proselytization can be limited, but right to follow a particular belief may not. No one can be coerced in a manner that impairs his freedom to have or to adopt a religion or belief of his choice. The word belief is to be understood in the widest terms to include every, even atheism. Non-derogable rights, second optional protocol, Article 6. Article 6 of the second optional protocol to the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, aiming at the abolition of death penalty, 1989, states that the right guaranteed in Article 1 of the optional protocol, that is the right of any person within the jurisdiction of a state party not to be executed, shall not be subject to any derogation under Article 4 of the ICCPR. Non-derogable Rights General Comments Human Rights Committee General Comment 29, Article 18, ICCPR In addition to Article 4 of the ICCPR, the General Comments of the HRC have added to the list of non-derogable rights the authoritative interpretation General Comment 29 states that even in those provisions of the ICCPR that are not listed as non-derogable, they are elements that cannot be subject to lawful derogation, including the following illustrative examples. The right of persons deprived of the liberty to be treated with humanity and respect for the inherent dignity of the human person. The prohibitions against taking of hostage, abductions or unacknowledged detention. The right of persons belonging to minorities. Prohibition on deportation or forcible transfer of population without grounds permitted under international law. This would be contrary to the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court. The legitimate right to derogate from Article 12 of the ICCPR, freedom of movement and right to leave the country, including one's own, during a state emergency can never be accepted as justifying such measures. No declaration of a state of emergency made pursuant to Article 4 Clause 1 may be invoked as justification for a state party to engage itself contrary to Article 20, in propaganda for war or in advocacy of national, racial or religious hatred that would constitute incitement to discrimination, hostility or violence. Certain elements of the right to non-discrimination, even though Article 26 of the other ICCPR provision related to non-discrimination, Articles 2, 3, 14, Paragraphs 1, 23, Paragraphs 4, 24, 
paragraphs 1 and 25 have not been listed among the non-derogable provisions in Article 4, paragraph 2. Other general comments of the Human Rights Committee that speak on non-derogation. In general comments 24, 29, 32 and 34 and draft general comments 35, the HRC has identified additional right and prohibitions that cannot be subject to lawful derogation, including freedom of opinion, although is not listed among those rights, that may not be derogated from pursuant to the provision of Article 4 of the ICCPR, it has been understood to possess elements that in the HRC's opinion cannot be subjected to lawful derogation since it never can be necessary to derogate from it in emergency general comment 34 the right to an effective remedy in the case of violations under the iccpr general comment 29 general comment 24 in order to protect rights explicitly recognized as non derogable in article 4 clause 2 procedural safeguards and judicial guarantees must be provided for. The provision of the ICCPR relating to procedural safeguards may never be made subject to measures that would circumvent the protection of non-derogable rights. For instance, as Article 6 of the ICCPR is non-derogable in its entirety, any trial leading to the imposition of the death penalty during a state of emergency must confirm to the provisions of the ICCPR, including all the requirements of Article 14 and 15. The guarantees of fair trial may never be made subject to measures of derogation that would circumvent the protection of non-derogable rights. Therefore, the right to be tried by a competent, independent and impartial tribunal established by law is non-derogable. General Comment 32. The right to take proceedings before a court to enable the court to decide without delay the lawfulness of detention. General Comment 29. Draft General Comment 35. The right not to be compelled to testify against oneself or to confess guilt. No statements or confessions may be obtained in violation of the principles of Article 14, General Comment 32, a prohibition of statements or evidence that obtained in violation of Article 7, ICCPR, General Comment 32, Convention Against Torture, another cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment, Article 15. Non-derogable rights, preemptory norms. And what are preemptory norms is the question. Preemptory norms are certain overriding principles of international law exist which form a body of just cogens. Article 53 of the Vienna Convention on the Law of Treaties is recognized as setting out the current internationally accepted definition of just cogens. It provides that a treaty is void if at the time of its conclusion it conflicts with a preemptory norm of general international law. A preemptory norm of general international law is a norm accepted and recognized by the international community of states as a whole as a norm from which no derogation is permitted and which can be modified only by a subsequent norm of general international law having the same character. Some illustrations, examples of preemptory norms are principles of the Charter of the United Nations prohibiting the unlawful use of force and be prohibition on the performance of any other act criminal under international law and see obligation on states to cooperate in the suppression of certain acts such as trade in slaves, piracy or genocide. Prohibition on torture the Convention Against Torture and Other Cruel, Inhuman or Degrading Treatment or Punishment. 1984 requires states, parties to take effective measures to prevent acts of torture 
in any territory under their jurisdiction. Preemptory norms in the ICCPR. The HRC in general comment 29 has stated that the fact that some provisions of the ICCPR have been listed in Article 4 Clause 2 as not being subject to derogation does not mean that other articles in the ICCPR may be subjected to derogations at will, even where a threat to life of the nation exists. In fact, the General Comment 29, the HRC has observed that the enumeration of non-derogable provision in Article 4 is related to but not identical with the question whether certain human rights obligations bear the nature of preemptory norms of international law. While Article uh, 4 Clause 2 enumerates some preemptory norms, for example, Article 6 and 7, there are additional preemptory norms which, though not specifically listed, cannot be derogated from. Fundamental principles of fair trial, including the presumption of innocence, Article 14 Clause 2, prohibition of arbitrary uh, deprivations of liberty, Article uh, 9 Clause 1, of prohibitions of taking hostages, prohibitions of collective punishments. Summary. Thus, ordinarily, state parties have the right to express limitations, reservations from treaty obligations and may derogate from them in times of emergency or on grounds specified for derogation in the conventions. However, there are close-knit groups of inalienable rights that are so inviolable and so fundamental to human existence that they may not be derogated from in any circumstances. The ICCPR provides a list of such civil and political rights that may not be derogated from in Articles 4, Clause 2, besides the accepted preemptory norms may not be derogated from and any treaty conflicting with a just cogent obligation shall be invalid. Further, the HRC, through its authoritative interpretation, has given the ICCPR Article 4 a broader and more expensive meaning and has enlarged the scope of protections that individual enjoys without the fear that states may derogate from their obligations to guarantee those rights. Thank you.